Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted or modded Nexus 6P to of course the Android O Developer Preview 3 which was uh, just released th uh, today pretty much and uh, that is exciting pretty much uh, right after my first video so basically what I'm going to do is install Magisk on Android O as the beta version of 13 or Magisk version 13 came out as well and I presume you can still use the um, first or the alpha super su uh, from chainfire as well from the first developer preview but yeah i'll be showing you how to update this using fastboot similar to the method i showed in my previous video so yeah it all starts uh, right now pretty much so you need your phone plugged in and all your drivers installed and unlock the bootloader as usual and uh, let's get started so first off we'll need to download a few things uh, that android o page is just for looks first off uh, you obviously you'll need the platform tools uh, this is adb and fastboot on your computer. I do have some tutorials here which I think are fantastic. Well, it's a little bit biased, but I especially like the Windows one where I'll show you actually how to add ADB and Fastboot to the path environment variable, meaning that you can use ADB and Fastboot in whichever command window that you like. So you don't actually have to change directories or anything like that. But if that's not your cup of tea, um, but it's probably good if you spend a lot of time doing these things. Uh, yeah, so if this is not your cup of tea, you can also download the platform tools from the Android SDK. Now this is a direct link, pretty, uh, sorry, a standalone package if you will. So it only contains the fastboot and ADB files necessary for you to use. So you can download them for Windows, Mac and Linux. So this is uh, something you want to download. So it's uh, follow my video or download this, Not don't do both. And next up, you want to download the actual developer O, uh, Android O developer preview uh, factory image. So we hit on that get started button and then scroll down a little bit till we see the devices for download and then click on Nexus 6P or whichever phone you're running actually and this tutorial should work for most if not all of these devices so I'm going to download the one for the Nexus 6P just here so you click on that and then you click agree and download the factory image now once you've downloaded that uh, you can now choose between Magisk or SuperSU uh, I'm not sure why this keeps on reloading but that's fine so this is the same one from the first developer preview I know it worked in the second developer preview so I'm going to guess that this might work uh, on the third developer preview. If not, you're more than welcome to use Magisk, which uh, definitely works as I tested this out earlier today. And basically you click on this download button here. Now this is different from the, I guess, the main or the official Magisk. This is a beta and pretty much it means that there are some bugs and things that don't work properly and you cannot interchangeably use the like older versions of Magisk with this new version of Magisk Manager and Magisk Manager cannot be using anything older than 13.0 so you gotta keep that in mind this is pretty much I guess exclusive for if you want to use 13 version 13 then you need to use this you can't uh, switch and switch them around pretty much so I'm gonna hit this uh, download button here and pretty much that'll give you a zip file and last but not least we we'll also need the version of or the latest version of TWRP for our phone so I did forget to mention this so we'll go to dl.twrp.me forward slash angler I'll leave all the links down below anyway so don't worry about that and basically we need to download the latest version of TWRP uh, if you have this version or any version that'll do as we'll be using the method that we've discussed uh, yesterday on my last video so uh, let's get started we have everything downloaded this is my folder here of all downloads I know this this font isn't too easy to see on a 1080p resolution, but uh, pretty much I have the platform tools uh, zip file here. I have the latest version of the Magisk Beta 13.0. I have the factory image for the third developer preview of Android O, and I have the latest TWRP image. So what we're going to do is open up our platform tools zip file here, open up this platform tools folder, and we're going to extract a few select files, just the things that we need. So we're going to extract adb.exe the two DLLs called ADB Win API and ADB Win USB API DLL. We're going to extract the fastboot executable, and of course we're going to extract the lib win p thread dash one DLL. Those are five files there, just like that outside in the same directory as where everything else is. So we can close this uh, window here now. Next up, we want to open the factory image. Now I know things are going to get a little bit messy, but um, trust me, it's worth it. We're going to open up the angular-opp3 folder here. We're going to extract the bootloader. And the radio here is the same as the one from this month's security update. So if you're already on that, there's no need to flash it. 
but I'll show you how to do that anyway, it's uh, quite simple. So I'm going to extract the radio and image files. Leave all the scripts below or behind, uh, we won't be needing those at all. Now I've checked inside the image uh, zip file here, located right there where my mouse is, and pretty much inside is or looks exactly the same as the previous factory images from the past few months. So we can use uh, this method again, so no worries there. Now also a question that was presented uh, before was, it, uh, was if it was possible to use the user data image from other factory images. And I say yes, but there isn't really a point as you can just use the fastboot format command and it'll do everything much nicely or, or nice, much nicer. Okay, so we've extracted everything. Uh, let's get started. Now this process won't remove any data. And basically what you have to do now is go over to your phone now I've plugged in the phone here and all you have to do now is uh, to make sure you copy the latest version of Magisk over to your phone. Now of course to do this you need to change it to transferring files and we'll need to hop back over to our PC here and pretty much uh, make sure you got the Magisk, latest version of Magisk, uh, the 13 version here or uh, your latest or that Super SU version built for developer preview 1. So I'll be using Magisk anyway. Uh, once you've got that sorted, you can unplug your phone and we can head over to the bootloader, which I'll show you how to do now. Basically what I want to do is unplug the USB from your phone. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to get into the bootloader. But hold on to your USB cable, uh, we'll be needing it very very shortly. And yeah, mine just fell to the ground. But anyways, uh, all you have to do is hold power and turn off your device. And once it's off, you just need to hold power and volume down at the same time until we get to this screen right here. Uh, right here. Uh, okay, there we go. So the bootloader screen. Usually you don't have to do it too many times. I think it's just this case. But my phone's too slippery to use the other case. Or at least on this cardboard here. So what you need to do now is plug back in USB. Now this is where your previously installed drivers will come in handy. As you won't need to reconfigure it at all. And basically from here all you have to do is go back to your computer now where I shall run you through what, what to do with everything. So let's move my camera over a little bit. Move this to the side just so you can see everything. So now uh, you will need to bring up the um, command prompt in your specific directory where you have your platform tools, so in this folder, or uh, if you have installed it to the uh, path environment variable, then pretty much you can just open up any command prompt window. But I'll show you how to open one in the same directory in the Windows 10 Creator update. So basically in the address bar you want to type in CMD and then it'll open up a command prompt window to that location. You can see it's already changed to uh, whoops to e Android like that. And I'm using a different console here. It might look a little bit different to the command prompt but uh, it's just so I can show you things a little bit easier easily as I can zoom in and all that. It's really cool. So yeah, I'll zoom in a little bit and we'll just move this so I can see both without any issues. Okay, cool. So basically from here, uh, what we want to do is double check that our device is in fact connected to Fastboot. So we can do this by typing Fastboot Devices. Now after this, all you have to do now is flash the updated bootloader image. So I'm going to type in Fastboot flash bootloader and leave a space on the end here drag in our bootloader image and hit enter now we want to reboot back into the bootloader you can do this on your phone by uh, pressing some of the buttons here like pressing volume down and then so it gets to reboot bootloader and then pressing the power button that'll serve to do the same thing now the other thing now we want to flash is the radio image so we can type in fastboot, flash, radio, leave a space in the end, and drag in our radio image and hit enter. And this should be uh, quite quick, and there it is. And the second last thing we need to do is flash, or use the update command. Now we're going to be using a switch called skip update, oh, sorry, skip reboot, so our phone won't automatically restart after it's done doing this, which is uh, extremely handy. So we're going to type in fastboot, and then uh, two dashes, so that is two hyphens, and then skip dash reboot, like so, leave a space, and then type in update, and then you want to drag in the image dash angular dash opp3 blah 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 zip file here, 
and hit enter. Now this will replace uh, the or our TWRP with stock recovery, but that is all right because we do have our TWRP image right here, and we're going to flash that afterwards anyways. So we're going to wait for this to flash itself. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, maybe about a minute, but I'll fast forward this until we get to the end, and uh, we'll have some more fun afterwards. So yeah, I'll fast forward this and I'll get back to you very soon. Okie dokie, so we're finished flashing the or updating our using our images. We're going to flash the our version of TWRP again. So we're going to type in fastboot flash recovery. Leave a space on the end and uh, drag in our TWRP image. There we are. Hit enter. And that will do us good. So now we need to go back to our device. We are done using the computer now. And basically from here what you want to do is navigate down using the volume buttons to until it says reboot, sorry, recovery mode in red, hit the power button like so, and wait a few seconds for us to boot into TWRP where we will flash Magisk or whichever root, rooting solution that you please. So, yeah, basically, uh, here we can swipe to allow modifications. We're going to tap on install. I'm going to go back up a level to my SD card and tap on Magisk version 13 and swipe to confirm that. Now this is going to go through its usual stuff and then we'll wait for this to finish and once that's done we're going to reboot to the system. Like so. And if TWRP asks you to say install their app or something like that uh, you don't need to. There is no need. Uh, if you, you can just say do not install and there's a little checkbox that you can uncheck for it, so it doesn't ask you every time you reboot from TWRP. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So this one should boot up quite quickly, and we'll see the results at the end. So I'm going to fast forward all of this, and we'll see what it looks like, and if there's anything new, uh, which there is, just a few things I think. So yeah, we can talk about those uh, when we boot up. Okay, so that was uh, pretty quick, mainly because I didn't have a pattern to decrypt my data with. So yeah, we are enrolled in the beta program. No, we're not, but we are. Uh, everything has turned into a square. I saw that as well. Pretty disappointing. No, I'm only joking. It just looks ugly. Anyway, we can open up Magisk Manager. We can have a look at its new version 15 interface. Hmm, looks pretty nice. So you can make sure that Magisk Hide is on, but I don't think it'll work. You can check safety net, but it probably won't pass. Oh, it passed now. It's all good. I lied. So yeah, you can use Android Pay on this now, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, the clock has a different icon, which is quite nice. And also, when you play music, not that I have any music on my phone, do I? Well, I don't. But uh, you can see our dynamic uh, music player bar here. They've changed a few things with the notification. They've reverted the stupid icon layout from Developer Preview 2, which is a uh, very welcome. They also have a new camera interface, if I may show. So you can swipe your little camera buttons here. Looks pretty cool. Um, that's about it. That's all I noticed. So yeah. Um, thanks for watching, guys. You can see we're properly rooted using Magisk, and we are passing safety net. And we are also on the developer preview number three. It might say Android 8.0 now, actually. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, we are. 8.0, fun stuff. So yeah, this is uh, how to root your phone using Magisk on Android Auto Developer Preview 3 as well as updating it from either 7.1.2 and this will also work, of course, from the second Developer Preview. But most importantly, this should work whether you come from Marshmallow or, or wherever, really. There's no really... You don't need to go through a, the sequence of updates before you go to the last one. You can just flash it as you please. So yes, thanks for watching, guys, and... I'll talk to you all in the next one.